good morning, good afternoon, good evening, saints in the Lord. Luke 6, 2, 6. Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to these false prophets. Now, Billy Graham is someone who I've given a lot of thought in making video content on. He preaches a damned gospel, repent of your sins gospel. He is a top-notch free will advocate. And, you know, I can't bemoan this point enough that the greatest heresy in Christendom is free will. Most people don't believe this because they, they don't think it matters. Um, a lot of free gracers who believe in free will, and then they see the verses that make it clear that we don't have free will, they kind of just say, look, it's a little bit of give and take. You know, it's synergism. God is sovereign, but man has free will. He's not making robots. They speak from a human's viewpoint, right? A humanistic vantage point is where they speak from. It's easy to do that. I don't blame anyone for doing that. I used to do it too, but I used to do it very, very young in the faith. I mean, extremely young in the faith where I may have read the Bible and not understood one verse out of it. I just knew that I got to start here. You know, I, I had my experience where I came to Christ and I was broken in guilt and I was actually repentant in heart. You know, that was happening. I'm not making that up. That That was going on in my life at the time. But when I read the scriptures, I didn't understand them. I knew one thing that Jesus was risen and he is God. You know, that's well, that's two things, I guess you could say. I knew Jesus was the Christ, I think you could say, from retrospect. Um, now, when we look at these quotes from, from Billy Graham, you know, in light of the multitude of scriptures, you know, I, I have studied free will versus predestination for the past year straight. And I could tell you unequivocally, if I didn't, and I'm not saying that my personal experience matters to you, um, but what does matter is what's my motivation. And for me to convey that point to you does matter to me, at least, to let you know that I, I don't do this to win an intellectual debate. In fact, that used to scare me that maybe I was just doing this to win an intellectual debate. And that threatened me to think that that could be a thing. But it's not, because after hitting that point where I wanted to understand what my own thoughts were conveying to myself about what I was doing and why I was learning about this, and it dawned on me that I had no opportunity to even make a decision. It just happened, right? This information download just gets revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Our Father in Heaven teaches us everything we need to know. We have one Father, even God. And for me to say that I take the unpopular position because I want to be right is ridiculous. But it can seem that way to other people. And it can even seem that way to yourself. If I'm being perfectly honest with myself, you become delusional because you realize that in light of very plainly read texts, people look at you and they tell you, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that. And then I look back down at my Bible and it says, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. And, you know, and then you you do a double take. Am I reading it right? You know, is that just to the disciples? How many of the verses out of John 14, 15, 16 am I going to pull out here? Um, you know, at what point do I stop applying the same hermeneutic that I applied in verse 15, 16, that I do in verse 19 and 20 and 21? And so after grappling with that, you know, and realizing that, no, you're not losing your mind, 
You're really not. Because what happens is you meet other sovereign gracers. You meet other people that are willing to put their emotions to the side and learn the scripture with you. And that's when the confidence starts to come in. And so I, I do want to get into this um, content on Billy Graham. And I pray the Father that I don't make any mistakes with this. This is this means a lot to me to cover uh, a highly influential person in Christendom who is held in very high regard. This is slaughtering many people's sacred cows. And that's it. It's not to get a lot of views, but the name could potentially draw a decent amount of views. And that's good in the sense that I would like for them to get the message. <laughs> for, for every maybe thousand people that reject our message, maybe one receives it. We know that God causes the increase. God causes the growth. We're here to sow a seed and let him do the work. That's all we are. We're ministers. We're handmaidens of God's work. He uses us as instruments, not robots. You know, and it, it's just what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to expose how every heresy in Christianity that puts the burden on you is born out of free will doctrine. Calvinists today, I don't think they represent Calvinists 400 years ago. I'm sorry. If somebody has some uh, studies that they've already done on this, I would love to have you on Discord. and Maybe you can give us a good frame of reference where to start looking um, instead of me just opening up a book on Calvin or Spurgeon or one of these people and reading their life story and autobiographies. I'm not that well read. <laughs> I'd probably never get that done, but I'm interested to know if the modern day Calvinism we see like John Piper, Paul Washer, John MacArthur, you know, today's triple headed wolf monster that we see. Uh, is it like that? Progressive sanctification, returning to the law that you're supposed to be dead to. I mean, these guys don't even try to hide it. Brother Chris did some videos on Paul Washer, and he still gets all these comments like, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And they don't care what those commandments are. They just think it's every commandment that Jesus gave in the Bible. You know, it's astounding. These guys have been teaching this stuff for four decades, and they have no clue what they're talking about. I can say that with confidence. They have no clue what they're talking about. When God's word tells me I'm free from the law, I am dead to the law. And that I am to die to the law. In other words, I'm supposed to reckon myself dead to sin and the law. Reckon means count. Count it. You're dead to the law. You're dead to sin. You're alive in Christ. That's not what these people teach. They teach a burdensome doctrine. They either front load the works before the gospel. Or they back load them. It's the same doctrine repackaged. There's one that's not so sneaky, and there's a one that's a lot more subtle and deceptive. Um, it's all born of free will. Someone might say to you, what do you mean uh, Paul Washer believes in free will? He's a Calvinist. He doesn't believe in that. Yes, he does. Listen to his sermon. What you need to know is that salvation is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. And faith alone in Jesus Christ is preceded and followed by repentance. A turning away from sin, a hatred for the things that God hates and a love for the things that God loves. A growing in holiness and a desire not to be like Britney Spears, not to be like the world, and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. The onus is on you. You better get to work or you're going to hell. Open quote, if you don't have works, you're going to hell. Close quote, Paul Washer. Don't tell me that doesn't speak to your capabilities. So let's take a look at some comments here, and then I'm going to do a video clip. Uh, God will never send anybody to hell. 
if man goes to hell, he goes by his own free choice. Okay. So when, when the Bible says one thing and a person says another thing, what do we side with? What do we side with? You know? You got Billy Graham who's telling you that if anyone goes to hell, it's by their choice. And do you know why that is? I'm going to be bold and I'm going to say it. It's because Billy Graham is ashamed of the Bible. He's playing a game of apologetics, defending a God that he believes in. Not the God of the Bible. Uh, instead of God creating man in their image, now, Billy Graham has created God in his image. And that's what many people do. If it bothers their psyche too much, they just don't look at that page in the Bible anymore. To them, if they don't see it, it's not there. God hath chosen you from the beginning. To salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief in the truth you know but what what billy graham is saying is that if a man goes to hell it was by his choice because god is not allowed to decide who goes to heaven and who goes to hell because that is not love according to billy graham no billy graham says that god loves every single person that he ever created. That's the loving God that Billy preaches. He loves the workers of iniquity. He loves the people he never knew. And he even loves everyone that's going to be in the lake of fire. That's the loving God that Billy Graham preaches. So we see here, he's going to say, if you don't make a decision, then time will make it for you. And time will always side against you. Chapter and verse. These quotes that he says made this man famous. You know why? Because these sayings of his are not in scripture. If he preached the Bible, he wouldn't be as popular as he is. He would be hated. For Christ's namesake, but he's loved by men. Okay, that's antithetical to how things should be going. When you preach the true gospel of grace, most people hate you. Period. What we got here? A Christian is someone who has turned to God from idols. Well, what if you are an atheist? See. Billy's not talking about you worshiping a, a different God other than Christ. He's talking about you loving your sin. That's right. Billy Graham is a Roy's preacher. He has a damnable gospel. The idols are anything that you do in life. If you like to play golf too much, that's an idol. If you like a sports team too much, that's an idol. So there's got to be some kind of immeasurable unquantifiable amount of disdain that you have for those things what is he teaching he's teaching you the law he's teaching you the top commandment love thy god with all your heart mind soul and strength this guy's basically probably carl stanley's predecessor i would say uh, i don't know if billy graham preaches you can lose your salvation i never really heard him preach that charles stanley didn't preach it either it's just well, you'll know that you're really his if. Here's another famous Billy Graham quote. If God eliminated evil by programming us to perform only good acts, we would lose this distinguishing mark, the ability to make choices. We would no longer be free moral agents. We would be reduced to the status of robot. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his step. O oh Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. 
You see, the prophets understood that they did not have a will of their own. They make it so painfully obvious to the reader. Job 23, 14, For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Psalm 21, 2, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. Psalm 41, 11. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. Psalm 56, 8. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Psalm 60, 12. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Psalm 73, 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Psalm 93. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. Psalm 103. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. I'm going to let this play for a while. I may cut in and make a comment or two here and there. But it's only uh, 2 minutes and 50 seconds, so I'm going to let most of it play. And I'm just going to warn you. This is exactly what the devil uses to deceive the hearts of the simple okay not every person who listened and liked billy graham is unsaved every single person that god wishes to save will be saved i do not fight against the word of god and I don't question God. I don't doubt God. I don't see God as someone whose arm is too short that it cannot save. And so I'm going to play this, but I'm warning you. This is designed to tug on your heartstrings and make you feel that you owe something to God and you are not good enough the way you are right now. That you need to change yourself for him to make you his child. Now you can't change your past, but you can determine your destiny by deciding for Christ. But Christ can change your past. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it, but if you surrender to Christ, he'll give you the power. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Come to Christ. He will give you a new strength and a new power and a new joy and a new peace and a purpose for living. Every person that ever lived has to make the same choice. It's either the world and its pleasures and its gods or it's Christ. Which is it for you? Oh yes, there's pleasure in sin for a short time. But it's soon over. The hangover comes and there's nothing you can do about it. Choose Christ and there'll never be a hangover except joy and peace. And it's an urgent decision because to delay makes the right decision harder. Indecision in itself is a choice. If you have a ticket for a flight to Atlanta tonight and can't decide whether to go or not, if you wait past the departure time, the choice will have been made. The plane will take off without you. Time decides if you will not. And time always decides against you. There's a lonely arena in the depths of your heart where the greatest battle of life must be fought alone. That's your decision about Christ. Your parents can't make it for you. The church can't make it for you. 
your friends can't make it for you, your girlfriend, your boyfriend can't make it for you. You have to make it yourself. Did I tell you it was going to be emotional? Or did I tell you it was going to be emotional? Now, you see, Billy Graham is somebody who has been given a gift. And every good gift comes from the Father of Lights. But is this a good gift? What I'm, what I'm here doing is charging him with a false gospel. Okay? We're at 207, but what did he say in the very beginning? So that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong, are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. So after giving them the good news that Christ has died on the cross and all the sins you've ever committed have been forgiven, what does he say? What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. What he's saying, in a nutshell, is you cannot receive this gift until you work for it. This gift is not owed to you until you can repent of all your sins. How does a man get up on stage in front of all these people and literally talk out of both sides of his mouth? The gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. I know this is not easy to believe. I understand that. As I'm telling you this right now, I'm getting emotional. That all these people cannot see that. And you feel for them. But fret not, because all that the Father gives to Jesus Christ will come to him. And every single one of them will not be cast out. God called the devil the most subtle beast of the field. Free will is something everyone believes in. Except for a very small sect of people out there. Even many Calvinists just pay lip service to the fact that they don't believe in free will, but they really do. Through their actions and their words, you see they really do. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. None that seeketh after God. But Billy Graham is telling you to be that one who seeketh after God. You know, the Bible is going to be very contradictory to people who do not study it and who don't care about rightly dividing the word of God. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all will be added unto you. Why is Jesus telling you to seek after the kingdom of God and Paul is saying that none of us do? Well, Jesus gives the qualifier to that because he also said that no man can come unto me unless it is given of him from my father. So we know that the reason why someone is going to seek after the kingdom of God is because they've been drawn. No man can come to Jesus Christ unless his father draws them and he will raise him up at the last day. The one who is drawn is going to be raised up at the last day. That's all the Father gives. Might as well say all the Father draws. The same thing. There's no contradiction there. It's perfect and harmonious, the Scripture. We don't have a contradiction. But if, if you're the one who seeks after God while you're in the flesh, dead in the Spirit, we have a contradiction. So Billy Graham is going to tell you that you must repent of your sins to receive the work of Christ on the cross who supposedly forgave you of all your sin. Listen to it again. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong, are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it, but if you surrender to Christ, he'll give you the power. There's the emotion tugging hard on the heartstrings. And I don't blame 
any of these people for feeling that emotion because we all want that chain. We hate this flesh. We groan in this body. We want to be taken out of this vile body and be in that body that's fashioned unto his glorious body. But that's going to take time. And all Billy Graham is telling you is that you can make your old man better. You can resurrect that old, dead, vile flesh, and you can make it better. He wants to see a change in your life on earth. He doesn't want you focused on heavenly things. Your conversation is not in heaven. It's here on earth, looking at yourself. Have I changed enough? I backslid. I was better last month. Do I really have the spirit? Billy Graham says I need to repent. Billy Graham says Christ is going to give me the power to change. Have I changed enough? You will never know. And if you're not self-righteous and blind, this will break you. It's called the law. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. This man is ignoring the fundamentals of Scripture. He's ignoring the fundamental idea that we are indeed totally depraved. And this flesh doesn't improve. It's not supposed to get better. How can something that's dead get better? I think it was left off at two minutes and seven seconds. And your decision, yes or no, will decide where you'll be a hundred years. <laughs> oh, goodness me, Billy. Psalm 65, verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, and we shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. A son dwells in the house forever. Blessed is the man whom God chooses to approach unto him, that he may dwell in thy courts and be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy holy temple. That's David. Let's listen to Billy. Your decision, yes or no, will decide where you'll be a hundred years from now. Okay. This is something that resonates with people because they have a built-in thought process that free will is real and you are the commander of your own ship. Not what the scripture says that our lives are not our own and that when the lot is cast into the lap, every decision is of the Lord. No, we don't submit to those scriptures. We submit to a charismatic, emotional man who wants to rip your heart out of your chest and make you cry like a baby and believe him and not the scriptures. And he's damn good at it. Let me just tell you that right now. You are talking about the most influential Christian speaker that we have seen in our day. Because he lives in an age where there's at least some kind of a media. Radio, TV, right? Not social media, but radio and TV and now social media. And so his... His sermons are recorded. They're out there in the digital world, recorded forever. And millions, if not billions of people have listened to this guy and they've been moved by him. Have they been moved by the Holy Spirit is a question. You know, we have Jesus Christ here. You know, we hear words from Billy. What does Billy say? Your decision, yes or no, will decide where you'll be a hundred years from now. John 15 and verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. John 15 and verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Does the world hate Billy Graham? No, the world loves Billy Graham. The world loves Billy Graham. It makes you wonder, has God chosen him out of the world? And I'm not saying that you got to be the most hated person in the world. I'm not trying to make that as some kind of litmus test for whether you're one of God's people. But for crying out loud, this man has been loved by hundreds of millions of people. Have you been loved by hundreds of millions of people? Now, you can take what you want. My personal position is this man is a false prophet. 
and his destination is the lake of fire. And I'm not happy and joyous to say that. But by their fruits we shall know them, and that means their gospel, not their works. I hope this blesses someone. I hope to do a more extensive video, maybe an hour, hour and a half long on this. He's got plenty of stuff, and uh, I've seen a 28-minute video, and I listened to a couple minutes of it, and boy, do you ever want to pull the air out of a room? I mean, this guy's got nothing but bad news for you. His his sales pitch is, look, there's, there's eternal life out there. There's every blessing in Christ you can imagine. All you got to do is stop sinning, and he'll give it to you. That's really his message. He's trying to sell you the gospel for a price, your sacrifice, your ability to stop sinning, your ability to keep the law. He's a cloud without water, okay? This man will make merchandise of you. He will have you working for a wage. He will have you working for salvation, and you won't even know it. And so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks in the Lord.